Hello everyone, and welcome to Train Talk. In this episode, we will continue our discussion of types of passenger cars. Last time, we looked at the most common of the generic types of passenger cars, such as coaches, dining cars, sleeping cars, and so on. Part 2 will be focused on different design styles of passenger cars that are currently in regular passenger service in the United States. A few of these car designs are used in other countries as well. Aside from overall car body styles, I will be using a few key features to distinguish different car types from one another. They are number and location of boarding doors, number of passenger seating levels inside the car, and if the car is designed for high platform boarding or low platform boarding. There are many different car types being used in the United States, so I will be primarily focusing on the most common ones that are in service on Amtrak and commuter railroads. Well, I think that's everything. Now let's begin. The first several cars we will be looking at are used on Amtrak Intercity and long distance trains. We'll start off with the Amfleet. Amfleets are long, tube-shaped cars that are used on inner-city Amtrak trains as well as most of the eastern long-distance routes. They were built by the Bud Company of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The cars are a single level and are built for high-platform boarding, with boarding doors located on the ends of each car. They do, however, have trap doors located at each of the boarding doors so that they can be used at low-level station platforms. Amfleets come in two different versions. Amfleet 1 cars have boarding doors at both ends of the car and are used primarily for intercity service, while Amfleet 2 cars have boarding doors at only one end of the car and are used mainly in long distance service. Both cars come in coach and cafe versions. Seating in Amfleet cars is in the standard 2x2 two two configuration, with two seats on either side of the central aisle. This is the standard seating configuration on almost all Amtrak equipment. Amfleet cars were designed specifically for Amtrak service starting in the mid-1970s with the introduction of the Amfleet 1 and take their design from the slightly older Metroliner electric multiple unit cars which were also built by Bud. Similar to the Amfleet 1, the Horizon is a single level car with high level platform boarding doors at both ends, although like the Amfleet, they are also equipped with trap doors for low platform boarding as well. Built by Bombardier in the late 1980s and early 1990s, they are based off of nearly identical cars known as Comets that were built for commuter service. Early in production, the Horizons were referred to as the Amfleet 3, as they were seen as a third version of the Amfleet car. However, the cars were quite different in their external appearance from the Amfleets, so this name never really caught on. Horizons have a simple look with flat, smooth sides and a flat roof. Like Amfleets, Horizons come in two different versions, coach cars and cafes. They are currently used on Amtrak intercity trains, although many will soon be replaced by new cars built by Siemens. Next, we have the Viewliner car. Viewliners were designed as new passenger cars for long-distance Amtrak passenger trains mostly running in the eastern United States. They are of a single-level design and have one set of doors at one end of the car. Designed for high-level boarding platforms, they are equipped with trap doors for low-level platform boarding as well. The cars have flat sides with a lower section that is angled inward and features corrugated metal. Three prototype Viewliner cars were built in the late 1980s by Bud, but it wasn't until the mid-1990s that the first production run of the Viewliner began. These cars were built by Morrison Knudsen and were called Viewliner 1. All of these were built as sleeping cars. In 2012, a new order of Viewliner 2 cars was placed with a Spanish company known as CAF. These include more sleepers, dining cars, baggage cars, and combination baggage and crew sleeping cars. Production of the Viewliner 2 cars is still ongoing as of early 2020. Next, we move on to another type of long-distance passenger car. 
Originally built by the Pullman Company in the mid-1970s, the Superliner is a bi-level car based off the much older high-level cars that were built by Bud for the Santa Fe Railroad in the 1950s. The cars have a main level on the upper floor with a smaller section on the lower floor. Superliners have one door on either side of the lower level and are designed for boarding at low platforms. Two versions of the Superliner were built. Superliner 1 cars were constructed in the mid to late 1970s by Pullman and consisted of sleeping cars, dining cars, lounges, coaches, and combination coach baggage cars. Superliner 2s were built in the early to mid 1990s by Bombardier and include coaches, diners, lounges, sleeping cars, and transition sleeping cars. Transition sleepers have one end door on the upper level and the other end door on the lower level so that the single level baggage cars, typically placed at the front of the train, can be reached while the train is in motion. Amtrak uses the Superliner 1 and Superliner 2 cars in long distance passenger service, particularly on routes in the western United States. Some of the cars are also used in inner city service, particularly on the Amtrak California trains. The California car is a bi-level passenger car designed for intercity passenger service specifically for the state of California. It is based off the long distance Superliner car. Like Superliners, California cars feature an upper main level and a smaller lower level and are designed for low level platform boarding. Other than internal car configuration, the main difference between California cars and Superliners is that the California cars feature two sets of automatically opening double doors on each side of the car at both ends of the lower level. The cars come in four types. Coaches, coach baggage cars, coach cafe cars, and coach cab control cars. The first generation of these passenger cars were built in the mid-1990s by Morrison Knudsen and Amarail. A second generation of these cars was built in the late 1990s and early 2000s. These newer cars, sometimes referred to as surfliners, were built by Alstom and are primarily used in Pacific Surfliner service, although some of them are used in San Joaquin in Capital Corridor service. Surfliner cars also come in four different versions. Coach, Business Class Coach, Coach Cafe, and combination coach, baggage, cab control cars. Up in the Pacific Northwest, the Amtrak Cascade service uses a very unique type of single level train car set known as a Talgo. The Talgo is a lightweight articulated train set built by a Spanish company of the same name. Unlike traditional passenger cars that ride on two trucks, each Talgo car shares a wheel pair with the next car on each end. This articulated lightweight design allows Talgos to travel through tight curves at a greater speed than traditional passenger rail equipment. Talgo trains have several different car types including coaches, business class coaches, a dining car, and a bistro lounge car. Business class cars on these train sets have an unusual seating arrangement for Amtrak of two by one, two seats on one side of the aisle and one seat on the other. The cars are set up for low-level platform boarding and have one set of automatically opening doors located at one end of the car. On either end of the train is a special end car. One of these cars is for baggage and the other is a generator car used to make electricity for the other cars on the train. There are currently two different types of Talgo train sets in use on Amtrak Cascades trains. Series 6 sets were built in the mid to late 1990s and have cosmetic fins on both of the end cars to match the height profile of the locomotives and non-powered control unit cab cars. The newer Series 8 trains were built in 2013 and have a built-in operator's cab as part of the generator car. This eliminates the need for an extra Amtrak shop-built non-powered control unit on the end of the train. Another type of passenger car that is used as part of a train set is the Acela car. These cars are used on the Northeast Corridor as part of the Acela Express train sets that were built by Alstom in the late 1990s. They are similar in design to standard passenger cars, but they are all coupled in a semi-permanently connected set 
usually with six passenger cars and a locomotive power car on each end of the train. Acela cars are single level with automatic doors at both ends. Train sets include three different car types, business class, cafe, and first class. Business class cars have a 2x2 two two seating arrangement while first class is 2x1. The cars are set up for high platform boarding. These trains are scheduled to be replaced with newer equipment in 2021. The last intercity passenger car I want to mention is the new Siemens Mobility built Viaggio Comfort passenger car. While these cars are still in production for use on Amtrak, a similar design is already in service for Florida's Brightline passenger train. They are an off-the-shelf European design that has been modified for service in North America. In the near future, the states of Illinois and California will receive large orders of these cars that will replace older equipment running on state-sponsored Amtrak trains in the Midwest and in California. Via Rail in Canada has also ordered many of these cars for service on their busy inner city trains in eastern Canada. These single level cars will have boarding doors on both ends of the car and while they are designed for high platform boarding, they will be equipped with steps and a trap door for boarding at low platforms like the Amfleet and Horizon cars. Several different versions are being produced including coaches, cafes, business class cars, and combination coach cab control cars. Next, we will take a look at a variety of different passenger cars that are used in commuter train service. The first car is the Bombardier Bi-Level. The Bombardier Bi-Level is one of the most widely used passenger cars in commuter train service in North America, particularly in the western United States and Canada. They were originally designed in the mid-1970s for GO Transit in Toronto, Ontario, and can now be found at more than a dozen different commuter operations. The cars have two main levels with a shorter, mid-level section on either end of the car that serves as a transition from one car to the next. All seating is in the standard 2x2 two -two configuration. The roof line is straight and flat in the center of the car with slants down on both ends at the mid-level sections. Bombardier bi-levels are designed for low-level boarding and there are a total of four sets of automatic double doors, two on each side. In addition to the standard coach and cab car versions that are offered for most different types of commuter car, some railroads, such as Altamont Corridor Express, have also ordered custom coach cafe versions. The next commuter car is the Hyundai Rotom Bi-Level. Rotom cars are very similar in design to the Bombardier Bi-Level. They have two main levels in the center portion of the car with a mid-level transition on either end for access to the next car. Like Bombardier bi-levels, the Rotoms have two sets of automatic double doors on each side of the car. Seating is also in the 2x2 two -two configuration. These cars were first built in 2010 and are designed with crash energy management crumple zone technology. Because of this, the cab control cars are built with large nose sections and do not feature an end door on the cab end of the car like most other commuter cab control cars. Los Angeles Metrolink and Miami's Tri-Rail are the only two commuter railroads to use road and by levels. Gallery cars are one of the oldest designs of commuter cars still in service. They are also one of the more unique designs of bi-level passenger cars, featuring a main lower level with 2x2 two two seating and narrow rows along each side of the car with single rider 1x1 one one seats on the upper level. The center of the upper level has no floor but is instead open so that train conductors can keep an eye on passengers on both upper and lower levels at the same time. Gallery cars are typically set up for low platform boarding with descending steps and one set of automatically opening double doors in the middle on either side of the car. The oldest gallery cars were built in the mid-1950s by Pullman Standard, some of which are still in regular service. Newer versions have been built by Nippon Chariot for Chicago Metra, Caltrain, and Virginia Railway Express. The Comet car is a single-level commuter coach used by many different commuter railroads, particularly in the eastern United States. 
As I mentioned before, the Comet was the basis for Amtrak's inner city Horizon cars, and externally, these cars are nearly identical. Five different versions of the Comet were built between 1970 and the early 2000s. The original version, built in the early 1970s and dubbed Comet 1, was constructed by the Pullman Company. Later models were built by Bombardier and Alstom. Similar to the Horizon cars, Comets have doors on both ends of each car, although some Comets also have automatic opening double doors in the middle of the car. On most Comet cars, the doors at both ends can be used for high or low platform boarding. The middle doors are only compatible with high platforms. Seating varies on Comet cars, but most commuter railroads have seats in a 3x2 configuration for increased rider capacity. One important thing to note is that the Comet name that is used to identify these cars was coined by New Jersey Transit, and several other commuter agencies have their own model names for these cars. For instance, New York's Metropolitan Transit Authority calls the cars Shoreliners. There are also some passenger cars that were originally built as electric multiple units using the same general design but were later converted to standard coach and cab cars. One such example is the New Jersey Transit Comet 1B. Several of these Comet 1B cars were sold to the California Department of Transportation for use on the Amtrak San Joaquin Intercity service. While many of the older Comet cars have been retired by their original operators, a number of them have found second homes operating in other parts of the United States and Canada. One last major passenger car design that we'll take a look at is the Bombardier multi-level car. These cars are particularly popular with eastern U.S. commuter railroads that use high-level boarding platforms but are also limited by height clearances and station platform lengths. Since these cars are bi-level rather than single-level like most of the older commuter cars, they are incredibly useful for expanding train seating capacity without increasing the overall length of the train. The interior floor plan of the multi-level is very similar to the Bombardier bi-level, with an upper and lower main level in the center and then shorter mid-levels on either end of the car. Seating is in the 2x2 configuration. The cars have a very unusual boarding door design. Each side of the car has four single automatic doors that open to the mid-level end sections. The doors at the very ends of the car are compatible with both high and low platforms, while the doors that are closer to the middle are able to board passengers at high boarding platforms only. This is one of the newer commuter car designs with New Jersey Transit being the first operator starting in the mid-2000s. New versions, including a self-propelled electric multiple unit model, are still under construction by Bombardier as of mid-2020. A number of unique commuter car designs have been constructed for individual commuter railroads, especially those in the eastern United States. We will now examine some of these one-off designs that were built for specific commuter railroads. Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority has a few different one-off designs of passenger car that it operates. The first is a single-level car built by German manufacturer Messerschmitt in the late 1980s. MBTA designates these cars as BTC3 and CTC3 for Blind Trailer Coach and Control Trailer Coach. These are very similar to the Comet series passenger cars with a slightly different external appearance featuring a more rounded roof section. MBTA also has several different bi-level commuter cars all of which have the same general design. The floor plan for these cars is very similar to the bi-level and multi-level cars built by Bombardier. However, the MBTA cars feature single automatically opening doors located at the ends of the car on both sides. The first of these bi-level cars were built by Kawasaki between 1990 and 2005. A later version was completed by Hyundai Rotem in 2014. Like MBTA, the Maryland Area Regional Commuter Rail also had some unique commuter car designs built for their service. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, Nippon Chariot built several single-level cars for Mark designated as Mark IIs. 
Like the BTC and CTC3 for MBTA, the Mark II is very similar to the general Comet car design, featuring a single level with boarding doors at the ends of the car. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, Mark commissioned Kawasaki to build a bi-level commuter coach dubbed the Mark III. These are very similar to the bi-level cars that Kawasaki built for MBTA, featuring the same door placement and interior design. The last one-off commuter car we will take a look at is the Long Island Railroad C3, built by Kawasaki in the late 1990s. These cars are used in Long Island Railroad commuter service, pulled by DE30AC and DM30AC locomotives. They are similar to the other Kawasaki-built bi-level cars, but have a lower roof due to tighter clearances on the Long Island Railroad. The cars are set up for high platform boarding only and feature single automatic boarding doors near the ends of each car. Well that does it for part two of our look at different types of passenger cars. Thanks for joining me. I hope this video will serve as a good field guide for you if you're ever trackside and trying to identify certain types of passenger cars. I may do individual episodes on some of the more common car types in the future if enough of you want to see that. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment below. If you have suggestions for other topics you'd like to see on Train Talk, I'm always happy to take a look at those as well. For those who haven't already, you're always welcome to subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on my latest videos and posts to the community tab. And remember, you can always stop by every Friday morning at 9am Pacific Time for a brand new railroading adventure. That's it for now. Until next time, I'm Mike Armstrong. I'll see you down the line. Thanks for watching.